Okay, so now, one, two, three, go! Good morning! <laughs> I thought you said you're gonna speak like uh, Mickey. What about that, Mia? Huh? Good morning, everybody. Oh, how is it? <laughs> okay, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Jana. I can't see you. You wanna move a little over here? Uh -huh. <clears throat> okay. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Monday morning already. I want to see Jana, so I'm moving this over here so I can see Jana. Okay, there you go. That works. Okay. Hello. It's Monday morning. What is that? How's that? Veterans Day. I can't understand. Oh, Veterans Day. Yeah, okay, yeah. Hi, good morning and uh, happy Veterans Day to our veterans. Uh, that's right. Thank you for reminding me. So today is a good day to... to uh, um, oh, we got to put the flag out. Remind me, okay? Display our patriotism today. Okay, so we are going to uh, comment on today's gospel, which comes from St. Luke, chapter 17, verses 1 to 6. Okay, what does it say? Jesus said to his disciples... Things that cause sin will inevitably occur. But woe to the one through whom they occur. It would be better for him if a millstone were put around his neck and he be thrown into the sea than for him to cause one of these little ones to sin. These are very strong words of our Lord. <laughs> He's, he's practically cursing anybody who uh, causes scandal. That's what he's talking about here. Okay, The sin of scandal. And he says it would have been better for a person like that to be thrown into the sea. Get rid of him that way. With a millstone around his neck. So that he doesn't, he has no chance of survival. He will drown. Very strong words from our Lord as a way of condemning the sin of scandal. So let's understand this uh, point by point because there are some very important doctrinal points here. For example, when our Lord says things that cause sin will inevitably occur. Why is that? Our Lord is saying it's going to happen. Sin is inevitable. Sin is going to happen. Well, why does our Lord speak that way? Where does that come from? Where do you think? Where do you think is the logic of our Lord coming from when He says sin is inevitable? Why is that? Sorry, Joe. Be because of man's broken nature. Very good, Joseph. That is the perfect answer. Okay. Because of what? Why is man's nature broken? Because of original sin. Very good. See, original sin. So, our Lord is not trying to say that uh, you know. Oh, you know, you you people are going to sin for sure. No. What he's trying to tell us here is that well, there's that tendency for us to sin because we are born with broken with a broken nature. We have original sin. So we actually are carriers of that tendency of sin the moment we get into the world. Okay? And that is why uh, we go through baptism and that erases original sin. Okay? But the stain of sin remains. The tendencies to sin remains. And our Lord already tells us here, inevitably, we will sin. Not because that's the... Not because that's the normal course uh, that he expects us to do, but rather because he knows our weaknesses. And he knows that we can be giving in to this weakness if we make the wrong use of our freedom. If we choose ourselves over God, if we choose to be selfish and only cater to our own whims and likes, we will inevitably sin. Okay? So, in order to avoid the inevitable, well, 
Let us not be selfish. Let us not cater only to our personal wants, to our personal uh, desires, to our personal whims. Eh? Let us focus on God and establish a good relationship with God in order to try to avoid sin. Because that's the only way we can make good use of our freedom if we are well connected with God. Okay? So sin may be inevitable, but it is avoidable. It is avoidable. Okay? It is avoidable. But our Lord says, Woe to the one through whom they occur. In other words, our Lord is saying, while it is inevitable, whoever causes another to sin, especially the little ones, who are the little ones that our Lord refers to here? You little ones? <laughs> yeah, well, of course, there's a reference to children, and there's a reference to innocence here. People who are innocent, people who can easily fall victim to the bad uh, to the bad influence of others who should have known better okay? you see that's the that's the psychology of a victim there is innocence in a victim that is why he or she falls victim to somebody who is supposed to have been more knowledgeable Okay, about what is wrong and what is right and wrong, what is good or bad, but has influenced somebody who is innocent. Okay, so, and, and that's why our Lord says, you know, that person, that person who does that to an innocent person, a person who is supposed to have been more trusted, somebody who is supposed to have known better, okay, to cause another innocent person to victimize another person to sin, that other one should be thrown into the sea. Because how dare that other one lead the innocent victim to sin? Okay? How dare he? How dare he? It is a very, very grave matter. Very, very grave sin, in fact, to cause scandal. And to victimize others who had trusted that person who had uh, deferred to that person for his or her influence of what might be good there is a deception that happens with a sin of scandal okay? there is a victimization that happens with this sin of scandal and that is why it is a very very bad sin but for us rather than focusing on scandals and what what it can cause others let's look at the opposite let's look at the opposite uh, 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 good okay which our Lord actually wants to make us understand here while it is bad to cause scandal okay and that's one part of it what is the opposite action that causes good if it were if it were not scandal what's the opposite what is what is it that we can show others that will help them that will help them in, with their lives eh? any guesses uh, Mia Shavi Shavel what's that good example very nice very nice good example Okay, good example. So, uh, uh, good example. Let, let's, let's talk about good example. Okay? So people who cause scandal, they can do it directly by having to victimize others or tell others the wrong thing or, or lead them to do the wrong thing. Okay? But on the opposite side of that, we can... We can cause people, we can help people to do good by just imitating our good example. Okay? So good example is, is what I like to call the apostolate of not talking. Okay? The, the ministry of not talking. It is the ministry of just showing others 
the good that we do. Okay? Showing others the good that we do. That even when we don't talk, even if we don't open our mouths, just by the fact that we are doing the right thing, we are actually helping other people do the right thing. And the, the opposite is true. When we show bad example, that in itself is already causing scandal. That in itself is already causing uh, other people to sin. Because, because, especially the little ones, especially the innocent ones, they are very easy to influence. And most of the time, most of the time, they look at our behaviors rather than listen to what we say. Okay? So innocent ones, particularly children, are drawn more to our example rather than to what we say. So let's give concrete uh, examples here, speaking of example. Okay? If you do your chores at home very well, you will influence your siblings to also do your cho their chores well. But if they see you lazying around, sitting around, and uh, not doing your chores punctually or not doing things properly, well, what are your siblings going to say? Well, if my big sister, my big brother is not doing it, well, why will I do it? Right? That's the mentality. That's the mentality of, of the innocent ones. That's the mentality of uh, the little ones. If big brother or big sister is not doing it, well, why will I do it? But if, if big sister or big brother is doing a good thing, then they're encouraged. Oh, I also want to be part of that. I also want to do that. Okay? That's the normal tendency. Right? So if they see you studying well and not getting distracted or in your computers, you are not uh, watching all sorts of crazy things. Well, then the younger ones will also follow your good example. Okay? But if they don't see you studying properly, then you're also causing them not to study properly. It's very simple. Okay? And that is why I want you all together in one big table as much as possible and not be in separate places. Okay? <laughs> see, there's a reason why I, I, I uh, make you study together. Because you can influence each other, either to study well or to waste your time. Okay? So, the older ones among you, those who are supposed to know better, have a very, very big responsibility. You ought to show good example to the younger ones. But sometimes the opposite happens. The younger ones are the ones showing good example to the older ones. Right? And that tells you already that this is not a matter of age. Not a matter of age. It's a matter of maturity, which does not come with age. Sometimes even the little ones, the younger ones, can be more mature. Because they're the ones who are following what is good. Okay? So when you follow what is good and you act on it, you're giving good example. Okay? But let me just give you one other example, which is very clear in our own parish. We have, been, we have been receiving Holy Communion on our knees and in the tongue for years. And what have we been noticing in our own parish of St. Joseph? Huh? Now, now, there are more and more people who are following that example. Okay? Whereas before, everybody just stood up and we felt like uh, the oddballs, right? We're the only ones kneeling down. Well, nowadays, nowadays, we are happy to report that more and more people are kneeling down for Holy Communion and opening their mouths, receiving our Lord in the tongue, which is the more reverent way of doing it. And many more people have reported and, uh, and told me that if only there were kneelers at church, they too will feel more comfortable kneeling down. That the only reason they're not kneeling down is because they're afraid they couldn't get up. <laughs> so those of you pastors, those of you lay ministers, those of you who have influence on your, in your parishes, might as well start convincing your pastors to put those kneelers. To help people who want to kneel down and, and show more reverence for the Holy Eucharist 
to do so by helping them kneel down to receive Holy Communion. Good example, folks. Good example goes a very, very long way. And you don't even need to open your mouths. Just show people by your works the good graces of God that God is willing to pour into their souls if only they respond favorably and correctly. Okay. Hi, Father Rolly. Good morning. Hi. 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 <laughs> Father Rolly's on our call today. I mean, on our call, on our, on our podcast this morning, broadcast on Facebook. Okay. We will uh, stop it from here. We are off to Mass. We're going to Mass at 8 o'clock. So have a good uh, day, everybody, and have a good week ahead of you. Hope to see you this week every morning at breakfast, 7 o'clock in the Kleoshko household where we do the gospel commentaries okay, for everybody's consumption. Okay, have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye.